Welcome everybody uh, to the July Summer Smoothies and Salad Series. I am Gail Schorsch, founder and director of Bronx Eats. And I'm so pleased that you've chosen to spend part of your evening with us tonight. A big thank you to Giselle Payne who organized this three week series. All of the beautiful flyers that you've received have been made by Giselle and we are just so grateful. So it's so nice to see all of you tonight. I know it's really hot and uh, you know, I hope you've been staying cool and I'm glad that you still have energy to be here tonight. Uh, food is of course a great reason to get together and Bronx Eats is here to offer you healthy, traditional plant-based foods that you know and love and also to introduce you to some dishes that you may not have thought to try. So please take a minute before the end of this class to fill out the survey in the chat box. Uh, this helps us figure out what to offer in the future. Uh, I'll put that in there in about a half an hour and I'd really appreciate it if you could fill that out. Um, again, Bronx Eats is a safe place to meet, to learn, to connect with each other around food and cooking. It's a shared community gathering place where we can start to find our footing again after COVID, uh, well, while still living with COVID actually. Um, so yeah, welcome. Um, I'm gonna introduce uh, Jesenia Gomez who we're so delighted to have here this evening. Uh, I would invite you to please um, turn on your video. It's really nice and makes it kind of more intimate if you're willing to do that. Uh, also during class, you can ask questions directly to Jesenia. If you prefer to use the chat box, that's totally fine. Um, again, if you are willing, your presence is important to us and it makes it feel like more of a community and a family if you can turn on your video. This is a class, but it's also a chance to share with and learn from each other face to face. So please turn your videos on if possible. And now let me introduce Jesenia. So Chef Jesenia is a New York based private chef and culinary instructor. She has a diverse clientele and has catered many events in the tri-state area. Chef Jesenia teaches after school culinary classes with keys to abundant life, as well as offering her own private lessons for kids, youth and adults. Chef Shetsenia has led healthy cooking demos for hospitals, clinics, markets, and community centers throughout New York City. She believes in teaching her students the basics of cooking so that they can feel more confident and creative in nourishing themselves. She's originally from El Salvador and grew up in Brooklyn. She attained her culinary degree from the Culinary Institute of New York at Monroe College and her Bachelor of Science from New York University. Chef Jesenia has been featured on Univision, Se Abla USA, and you can contact her at chef underscore Jesenia or by email, gomezjesenia at gmail.com. And with that, I would love to hand it over to Jesenia. We're really so grateful you're here and please take it away. Ah, thank you so much for that introduction, Gail. Hi, Giselle. <laughs> Hi, Mara. Um, just saw beautiful, beautiful, beautiful flyers. Um, so thank you for that. I appreciate uh, so it. Thank today, you. <laughs> I had to give it because I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so creative. <laughs> thank you. Um, it makes our, our food so appealing. I was looking at the recipe uh, card today and I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Anyhow. Um, One more so thing. Thank you for having me. This is just People need to know that they can go to your box with your picture and click on the three dots and pin Jesenia's face. And that way her screen will show up bigger for you. So please do that so that you can enjoy what she's about to teach. Yes, please. Especially if you're on the phone, you can double click. Uh, so today we're going to make a Southwest quinoa salad. So I'm going to take you step by step. Um, if you're not making it with me today, you can certainly follow the recipe. It is a delicious recipe and it's full of so many nutritious ingredients. And what I love most about it is that it's literally sort of no cooking. Just one item has to be cooked and that's the quinoa. Please feel free to ask me questions along the way. Uh, let's have some fun. Let's make this really interactive. No question um, will be left unanswered. If and I don't know the answer, then I can reach out to you and give you the answer. So Southwest, Southwest uh, is comprised as an area in the United States, right? It's comprised of Utah, 
New Mexico, Colorado, Texas, Nevada, um, California, and it's hot down there. So think about it, right? <laughs> um, and this is called the Southwest salad because it, it encompasses uh, ingredients that have been growing in that area for a very long time. And that is peppers, right? So chiles, um, squash is one of them, beans and corn, uh, especially pinto beans are originally from that area. So this recipe has most of those ingredients. So I'm going to go over visually what the ingredients are and then I'm going to start, give me one second. I am going to start with cooking the quinoa. That's gonna take about 15 minutes. So the ingredients here are fresh uh, red pepper, avocado, red in for a bit of heat. I'm gonna use some raw grape tomatoes. I have here some canned black beans. You can use whatever brand you have on hand. This is just the brand that I happen to find in my supermarket. Organic and low sodium is best. This is um, an ingredient that I found. This is organic fire roasted corn that's already roasted. So if you can find something like this in your freezer section would be great because less cooking, right? It's really hot and we don't wanna be by the stove the entire time. I have some fresh limes, some um, garlic here, some salt, black pepper. And for my dressing, I'm gonna use olive oil and some honey. You can also, if you're not a vegetarian or if you wanna add a different kind of protein, you can also get some rotisserie chicken or poach some chicken and shred it and add it to your salad. But you don't need to use chicken or any other protein because quinoa, it is a seed. Has anyone here used quinoa before? I know Gail has, Mara has, yep. so has to sell. I don't know if yeah, anyone else is. Two ingredients that have protein is the quinoa and the black beans. So you really and the black beans. But between the two of them, the quinoa is actually the full protein. With a serving of quinoa, um, you don't need to eat any other pro animal protein like chicken or beef. So this is a seed. We call it whole grain, but it's actually a seed because you can plant this and you will grow little quinoa plants. So this is an ancient grain from Peru, down in South America. It is about 3000 years old. So it's really, really ancient. And um, it's used for energy. It has a lot of fiber, it has a lot of iron. It has a lot of everything. It has a lot of potassium. And so I use this in replace, um, to replace rice in most of my recipes. Um, I also use it, if I don't wanna make any rice, this is what I use, like for my stews or for oatmeal. It can be used in many, many ways, especially even in baking. So I'm gonna take you to my stove. So this is the only time you're gonna see me today, going to my stove. And I cook quinoa differently than a lot of other people. I've seen other people do it this way too. I toast my quinoa. And I do that with a lot of other grains. So like farro, um, bulgur, rice. I also toast it. And what that means is add in a tiny bit of oil, not a lot, maybe about half of them. I'm using my avocado oil. This is a really good oil to, to start using. Um, obviously made of avocado. Protein has a lot of the benefits that avocados have. It also has a high smoke point, which means that you can saute, you can cook with this. I like to add it to my dressings. I like to cook my eggs in it. Um, anyone else? Add avocado, use avocado oil. 
Giselle is saying. I yes. do. Yeah, I switch between so, that and grapeseed oil. And grapeseed oil. I use grapeseed oil um, as well. So here I heated okay. my my oil. And I measured out a cup of quinoa. Now, quinoa is very abundant. So a cup is going to give me at least six servings, okay? So it really uh, renders a lot. So Jacinia, there is a question about why are you toasting it? Why am I toasting it? When you toast nuts or grains, the oils and all the flavor, it becomes much more um, emphasized. So your quinoa is going to have a lot more flavor. The same with the bulgur, same with your rice. And when you use nuts in your recipes, put them in the oven for about five to 10 minutes, 400 degrees, okay? And it's going to just emphasize that nuttiness. Does it require- I do this with Sorry. Is it required? No, sorry. Does it require like a longer cook time than if you were just to cook it without toasting it? Or is no, it, it takes time? about 30 seconds to a minute for you to toast it. And it's you're going like to smell it. Water. Oh, no, it doesn't even, it actually probably might cut it a little bit. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, it doesn't make it longer. So the oil just helps in toasting it. So I'm not going to add anything to this quinoa, but you can treat quinoa like rice. So you can add onion, garlic, celery, carrot, tomato, salt, pepper, turmeric, whatever you have on hand and you can season it like rice. The only rule is that one cup, so it's a one cup to ratio, one cup of quinoa, two cups of water. So half a cup of quinoa, it's one cup water. But you can also use stock. Um, I have a question. So here I'm yes. You need to rinse, you don't need to rinse the quinoa? before you cook it? Now, Gail and I went back and forth on this. <laughs> right, Gail, on email? <laughs> yes, we um, did. So you don't need to rinse it. It's, the reason you rinse it is because back in the day, I know that the, that the packaging says to rinse it. Back in the day when this was less popular, the machinery wasn't that good and you would find uh, little pieces of things or um, the husk. So you had to remove all of that because the quinoa was bitter when you made it. And I made it both ways and it actually doesn't really taste much different. So yeah, I, think uh, Gail. I just would add to that, that that's true of beans also, right? The way things are packaged now, they really do a pretty good job getting the pebbles or the stones or the things that used to kind of show up in beans and quinoa. And so you can rinse it, but as Jacenia is saying, there's not gonna be a big difference in flavor. And I would bet it would be the rare package that's gonna have a stone or you know something foreign in there because um, we've gotten much more advanced in how to package things. Right, absolutely. So that's why I read up on that. Um, and also I think it's <laughs> with the seeds of the quinoa, it's like it gets all over the place. So unless you have one of these, these little fine mesh colanders, it's so hard to rinse it in the bowl. Have you tried Mara? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, I actually bought a colander like that because it would fall through the bigger colanders. Um, but now I'm happy not to rinse it. Absolutely. I already learned a lot today, see? You don't have to. Yes, um, you can, you know, if it makes you feel better, yeah, you don't have to rinse it. You can try it out and it doesn't taste, it doesn't taste bitter at all. So I'm, I'm done rinsing So while it. that, I'm gonna bring that to a boy. <laughs> Done forever. So I'm just gonna just bring it to a boil. Somebody... I did cover it. 
Somebody's saying that they had yes. quinoa burgers for lunch at their senior center. Oh, I love it. But it had to have something else, right? I'm sorry? It, it must have had some other ingredients, right? Stella, are you willing to tell us what else was in there? I'm not sure if she can unmute. Uh, it, it, yes, it had other ingredients, but I don't know what they were. <laughs> but it was, it was delicious. That was my first time having that. There was something holding it together. I don't know what it was. Yes, and I'm sure it had a grain or a corn, a black bean, something <laughs> else to hold it together. But um, that, that's absolutely great. So I'm going to, I've actually had a quinoa in cookies, like baked goods, cupcakes, um, cakes. So it's an excellent, excellent, excellent ingredient to use. So now I'm just going to go and, oh, my quinoa is boiling. Yesenia, there's a- So I'm going to bring it down. There's a comment that says, uh, when you buy in bulk, you might want to rinse your quinoa or your rice, but when you buy it packaged, you Package. use less reason. Thank you, Mary, for that. Oh, you mean like that Whole Foods? Whole Foods has quinoa in bulk. I'm not sure what other supermarket has quinoa in bulk. That's the only place I've seen it. That's a good yes, point. That's a good point. But definitely, like I showed you, I'm like, where did my counter go? Um, get one of these from your supermarket. They're not very expensive. They're like $2, and it will save you all that time um, and frustration when you're, when you're rinsing your quinoa. So for red peppers, I, um, I like to cut the top. So I'm going to give you some knife tips in this class. Cut the bottom. Slice it through the middle, <clears throat> right? Like a dress, like a zipper. You literally open the pepper. And then with, you don't need to use a large knife. You can use a paring knife, a small vegetable knife. You literally take off this part of my board. So all the seeds are contained. So in terms of the health benefits of red peppers, I'm not sure if anyone knows, but the red and the green bell pepper are the same. So the green is the young pepper and the red is the adult pepper. I didn't know that. Um, yes. And so this has a lot more vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin C, than the green pepper. And the taste is very different. The sugar is sweeter when it's red. Um, if you eat a cup of red pepper, you're actually eating more vitamin C than if you were to eat one orange. So it's best to eat it raw so that you don't cook off all the nutrients, right? This so is why I, I love just this, repeat that this recipe. Any, I think that's such an important point that you just made that um, eating things raw often has more nutrition. Doesn't mean that nothing should ever be cooked, but often eating raw, um, as you said, eating one red pepper raw is gonna give you a lot more vitamin C than if you cook the red pepper in a dish. Absolutely. And as you know, the more we cook it, the more it loses its nutrients, right? That's why when we cook broccoli and all our greens, they should stay bright and with a bite as much as possible, especially our green beans. I know people who overcook those vegetables, but if you can get used to it a little less, um, the more you cook it, literally all the nutrients get washed out in the water. Let's say if you steam it. For kids, you can... Uh, make little sticks, have them do it with you. And they could dip it in hummus or a yogurt dip. Uh, we made a stir fry today with one of my classes and they just, they ate it up. They ate up all the broccoli, they ate up all the peppers. Um, so kids really do enjoy these kind of vegetables. So in terms of dicing, I am just literally cutting little squares you don't have to be perfect. 
The point is to make them bite size. You can also use orange or yellow peppers. Now those are just different kinds of peppers. Those are not, um, they're just as delicious. They're a little bit more expensive. I don't see them around as often. But they're beautiful to add to your salads. We eat with our eyes, right? And so the more colors that we add to our salads, try to use different purples, red, yellow, green, white, um, as much as possible. Any other salads uh, that you, that anybody eats here? So we're having a quinoa salad, but and this is not working. Any other types of salads that you enjoy during the summer? Anyone want to share? I like um, bulgur in my salad. Bulgur. I love bulgur in salads. Um, what kind of salads? Any specific recipe? Well, Let's no, share no, some no, salad recipes no. with each other. Um. Can you, can you repeat that? I said kind of like the one that you're cooking now. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what's your salad dressing made out of? Well, I make my own out of lemon and lime with olive oil. Oh, wow. Okay. And do you add any sweetener? I try not to. I don't... Um, you try not to. Yeah, because I don't do sugar. You know, I drink my tea without sugar, you know, so. So beautiful. I'm glad you mentioned that because when it comes to salad dressings, when we buy them pre-made, they are full of sugar, a lot of processed sugar. And so it's best if you learn to make salad dressings and you can make salad dressings with absolutely with so many types of ingredients like garlic, onion. Um, you don't have to use uh, sugar. You can actually use agave, which is, this is vegan. And then this is the, I call it a syrup, but it's made out of the agave plant that also tequila is made out of. No, it's not alcoholic. My kids are always like, when I say my kids, it's not my kids, I mean my classes. They're always like, chef, you're giving us alcohol. I'm like, no, it's not the same. <laughs> so then we talk about how agave is made. It's literally the, the pulp of the agave, you know. It looks like a cactus, if anyone's ever curious. And somebody I look like a cactus. So I also use, go ahead. That date syrup is also uh, an option, uh, agave or date syrup. Date syrup, I've not seen date syrup. To make it yourself or to buy it? Well, I think she means you can buy it and put it in salad dressings if you wanted to sweeten up the salad dressing. And somebody else is sharing- uh, Yes, yes, yes. They're saying they make a salad with chickpeas, string beans, corn, onions, red peppers with a drizzle of Italian dressing can drained and nice. made when necessary. So that sounds delicious. Lisa, thank you for that. Um, I just wanted to say whatever you're doing, whatever, kind, are... whatever kind of salad you're making, whatever kind of dressing you're making at home is always going to have less sugar and less salt than what you'll find in a restaurant or from uh, a store-bought product. So that's one of the reasons why home cooking is, is such a great way to take care of your body and take care of your health. It's... Is there just you're, and you're gonna notice? Go ahead. Right, and you're noticing that I'm literally just chopping this really quickly. Um, you can always prep your ingredients a couple of days ahead and put them in different containers. Put your quinoa in a container, your tomatoes in a different container, and that is so because the acid or like the tomatoes or the or cucumbers are really watery. So that way, all that water doesn't get into your other veggies. And then you just mix and match and make yourself a, a salad dressing. Tahini is also really great for salad dressings. It's made out of sesame seeds. Um, so 
I love making a tahini, lemon, and a little bit of honey dressing with olive oil. So here I cut my cherry, these are grape tomatoes. And just so you know, grape tomatoes, obviously in season, all tomatoes in season in the summer. So you could play around with the color, get some green, get some, there are some green tomatoes, some uh, purple, some yellow. Um, and tomatoes are really good for your heart health. It has lycopene. And so it gets rid of a lot of your toxins, right? Because we have a lot of toxins in our body. So here I'm quickly chopping some red onion. You can um, use white onion, but don't use the Vidalia onion, the yellow one, because I think that one is really, really, really strong. And onion, not sure if you know, they're really good for your respiratory system. They make you cry too. <laughs> Anyone, yellow onion, um, does anyone not cry with onions? <laughs> Any tips? I don't have a magic tip. I really don't. <laughs> I don't know. I put my onions I always in heard, the sorry, Mary, go ahead. Mary, what? I put my onions in the refrigerator. Oh. In the freezer? No, in no, the no, 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 just in the, in the refrigerator. And so when you chop into it, I don't cry. I don't know if anybody else does, but I don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> you need a gas mask, Lisa says. <laughs> That's funny. I heard, and I sometimes try this, if you put something metal, like a fork or a knife or a spoon in your mouth while you're cutting the onion, it somehow prevents you from crying. And I do find that it sort of works. So that's you it. I'm it's about, I'm another about one. To do it. I'm about to do it live. <laughs> they come up with another tip, like if you place something wet, like a wet paper towel, soaking the wet paper towel next to the onion, it prevents you from crying. But I don't know if that's how scientific <laughs> is that, that is. <laughs> I love hearing these, but I, I have to tell you, I'm going to have to try Gail's uh, another time. <laughs> um, so here I'm cutting the jalapeno. If you've never cut a jalapeno, the heat is in, is in the middle, is in the seeds, right? You can actually eat the seeds or the white part in the sweet peppers, but for hot peppers, avoid eating that unless you really enjoy the heat and then wash your hands with soap because I have accidentally um, put it in my eyes and it's, it's not so pleasant. So jalapenos, heat is really good for us to eat because it makes us sweat. It also reduces, gets rid of a lot of our toxins. So there's a lot of cuisines out there that use heat in terms of chiles, okay? So done chopping, so very, very red, green, purple. Just going to rinse my canned beans. Now, every time I get Goya, I, I'm always afraid someone's gonna say, why did you get Goya? Because <laughs> some people don't like Goya and I don't always love Goya, but sometimes it's the only thing I can find. Um, and so I'm not pushing any brand by me showing you what I'm doing, which one I'm using. You can make your own beans uh, by soaking them overnight, cooking them for two hours and have them, you can actually freeze them as well. So if you don't wanna buy cans, you can pre-make your own beans. I rinse my beans, um, my canned beans, because I get rid of all the, um, all the, the stuff that's in there. I know some people don't because it has flavor, but the preservatives for me is too much, especially for salad, I think it's too gooky. That's a word. No, and I think it's important for people to know that if you buy dried beans and soak them and then cook them yourself, you're going to get probably four times the amount of food that you get when you buy a, a canned, you know, canned beans. Absolutely, it's cheaper, they're more delicious. Um, I was just in El Salvador about three weeks ago 
and I brought these from El Salvador and it's like freshly picked. Um, so it was, it's really much cheaper and abundant. So this is what I mean by rinsing them under cold water and then I get rid of all of that. I do the same for the canned corn. Does anyone else do that? I get okay. controversial. Did somebody want to respond? I always rinse my beans. Right? Do you rinse chickpeas as well? Always. Yeah, all types of beans. So here's my quinoa. You see those little craters? That's how you know it's done, okay? And oh. it's nice and fluffy. So you had that make... covered so that everybody knows. You, you brought it to a boil and then you mm -hmm. simmered it and covered it? Yes. And then you just, just checked on it now? To yes. So they, you never open it like rice. Never open the lid of your rice. You always leave it covered. I could see through the glass that it had those little craters. And that's a sign that it's already cooked. It's how you see it renders at least five full cups of cooked quinoa. But because it's a salad, I am going to take some out and cool it a little bit. How's everyone doing? No one's showing me their faces. Hi. Oh, I thought Lisa was showing me her face. Her picture is very, yes. Aveline, nice to meet you. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take out some of the quinoa and put it in a glass bowl so that it cools a little faster. Otherwise, my veggies are going to be completely wilted or cooked. Okay, so I'm just going to repeat that. You finished making the quinoa, and because it's still hot, you're moving it to another container so that it cools down. Mm -hmm. you put all of the raw, uncooked veggies in with it while it's hot, it would get uh, soggy and soggy and it would start wilting if, if you were to use like arugula or some greens it would definitely wilt your greens or cook some of your veggies so and I'm Stella gonna... is asking if you season the quinoa with salt before cooking I didn't and the reason it, for this recipe I didn't because the dressing is gonna have all the salt and all the flavor but if you were to just make it for um you know, for for like a side, then yes, you can season the quinoa with a little salt and black pepper. Great question though, really great question. You don't want to be duplicating your salt intake, right? If you're going to have it in the dressing Absolutely. and you don't have to put it in the uh, quinoa. Absolutely. So I love using real garlic in my dressings. You give it a little, And then a little, so I put my knife on top of it and then I squish it. And that helps me get rid of the peel. I could mince this or if you have a cheese grater or a zester, use that <laughs> in your bowl. You see how much faster I'm getting this done? And you can literally make like a whole uh, bottle of of dressing and just keep it in your fridge. How long does that last, Jasenia, if you make a bottle of dressing? Um, it lasts a good month, but I keep it, definitely keep it in your fridge. Do not leave it out. So just quickly grate my garlic, which also has a lot of Nutrition benefits, as we know, it's anti-inflammatory. Um, I'm not sure if the other chefs have shared a lot of the benefits. So if I'm repeating myself, or maybe yeah, I'm just reminding great. you. It's totally great. It's, we're always happy to uh, be reminded. Uh, garlic is great. It's anti-inflammatory. It's antiviral. It's just such a magic, magic, magic ingredient. If you leave it out for 10 minutes, all the health benefits are going to increase. Wow. So 
If you have the time to do that, I would literally leave this out for a good 10 minutes. And the smell also, it's gonna be a lot more potent. The same thing with onion. So it's not just to increase the flavor, it's also to increase the nutrition? The benefits, the health benefits. Okay. So I'm simply gonna eyeball it, but about two teaspoons of honey. I don't overdo it with honey in the beginning. I add it gradually. That's how I make most of my dressings, even just recipes, as you know. Some salt and some black pepper. Now I like to add my salt in the beginning of my dressing. Why? Because it dissolves. And that way, when I taste it, I know that all of the salt is dissolved throughout the recipe. Some people add it at the end. And I've learned that it's best if you do the opposite. Lime, about two or three. So when you make dressings, it's definitely important to add an acid like apple cider vinegar, some kind of vinegar. Um, I actually even use orange juice, like natural orange juice, tangerine, uh, lemon to, to flavor a salad dressing. It cuts, it balances everything out. So can you tell us a little bit about the uh, tool that you're using to get that juice out? Oh, this is, a, this is a citrus. This is actually for oranges. It's a citrus um, juicer. You can find this at a supermarket or, yeah, I think I bought this in the supermarket, but I like to use the large ones. So because, you know, citrus comes in very different sizes. Sometimes you end up with really large, large um, lemons. Limes right now are so juicy, so, so juicy. So definitely gonna add only about three. <coughs> And then I'm going to whisk in some of my olive oil or avocado oil or grapeseed oil is also really good to use. There you go. But first, I blend all of this together, the salt, the garlic, the lime, the pepper, like I said, to make sure that the salt dissolves. You can use scallion. What else can you use? Um, shallots. Shallots are those little purple onions. A lot of people don't use them, um, but they're so delicious to use in dressings. It's also so good to cook with shallots. So I drizzle the olive oil in. I don't just lop it in there. And this is so that I create my emulsion, right? Because olive, because oil and water don't mix. So if I whisk it as I drizzle it in there, it's going to combine really well. And I also use less oil. Now for health reasons, if you don't want to use too much oil, you can also add a little water to your dressing. So there's my dressing. I always taste my dressing um, using like a green, some of the lettuce or a tomato this time. You dip it in there and that's how you know that it tastes good or at least to your liking. It's perfect. All right, so my dressing's done. Any questions on dressings or anything? Well, I just want to add to what you're saying that um, I also didn't know that you could sort of add water to dressing and it sort of expands and enlarges how much dressing you have without having so much vinegar, lemon or whatever, lime or whatever it is you're using. So I think it's a really good way um, to kind of make sure that the salad or the quinoa is properly dressed without overdoing it on the ingredients. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you can also add a little water to pre-made dressings, the ones that you bought <clears throat> for the same reasons. Because they're very oily, right? 
And so you're trying to cutting down on the sugar and the, and the uh, some of the ingredients you may not want a lot of. <laughs> right, right. So I'm just going to quickly rinse my corn. I know corn is controversial, and I agree. Um, everything in the United States has corn syrup. So if corn is a trouble ingredient for you, use less. Um, then what? Then one can use fresh, use frozen. So because we're making a Southwest salad, definitely adding it. If you ever want to roast corn, you can roast it in the oven for like 15 minutes. And it's really, really, really good and quick. Fresh or frozen corn is not going to have the sodium that canned corn has. So that's another That answer. too. That too. That's why I rinse the sodium off the canned corn for that same reason. So I'm going to just simply mix it. And I know it's 716. So I'm almost done with this. Um, I know I'm taking longer, but because we're talking about all these benefits, et cetera, and sharing. It looks like summer in a bowl. You know, you can you can definitely eat this up without the quinoa. Um, add more green, add more, not sure, orange, add whatever you'd like. You can add some arugula, some spinach. The last thing I'm going to add is some chopped up avocado. So you can't tell me this, this salad has all the nutrients in the world. <laughs> it's so beautiful and it literally took less than half an hour. So it's really good. Yes. And, and you know, and I'm like I said, I'm going slower just because we're talking about all the benefits, right? So for the avocado, I simply just cut it in half. I actually just did the grid in the peel itself. Then I use a spoon and I literally just scoop it out. Um, another idea for a delicious dressing that I simply love, takes a little bit more effort than this one though, is to add an avocado to your blender or food processor and add the cilantro and garlic and lime, olive oil, blend it. It's so good. So you end up with like a creamy avocado dressing. If you do use dairy, you can also use sour cream. <clears throat> and you end up with like a crema avocado dressing. You can add the whole avocado, you can add half. And the one ingredient I totally forgot to add, just reminded myself, is fresh cilantro. Now for fresh cilantro, I love adding fresh cilantro to my salads, but if you're not a fan, um, you can omit it. Cilantro is actually, if you don't like cilantro, it's actually uh, not your fault. It's in your genes. Bye, Giselle. <laughs> it's in your genes if you don't like cilantro. So almost done, a couple of more minutes. And then when it comes to dressings, Add half, mix it, taste it, and then add some more. Because you have to make sure that your salad, that your salad is not overly dressed, because that's possible to overdress salad. Also, if you were to make this for like a picnic or for a barbecue, I would add the dressing right before you serve it. No more than 10 minutes, because it's going to ceviche your vegetables, right? Ceviche means it's gonna cook, gonna cook uh, down your vegetables. All right, so as you know, we're gonna do a close-up of this beautiful salad. So it's really, really pretty, very bright. Whoa, look at that, beautiful. Giselle, did you wanna make an announcement? 
Yes. Um, two things. One, oh my goodness, it looks looks delicious. I can only tell. Um, <laughs> so basically, I can make a Chipotle bowl at home rather than going to Chipotle. That's what I'm seeing right now. Um, anyway, yes, everyone, Absolutely. thank you for coming. I um, put a link to the survey um, in the chat if you guys can fill that out because we'd love to hear your feedback um, on this class and on what Bronx is doing in general. And if you have any um, any thoughts of like what series you would like to see next and whatnot and you know any ideas that you have and um, how we're doing and things like that, we'll definitely appreciate it. Ooh, I'm excited. So I added the quinoa at the end because I said it was warm. So definitely wait for it until it's cool to add it. But that's it. Beautiful. <laughs> I can't make it any, I can't put it any closer. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, really, You're welcome. It makes it just seem like something that we can all do. And I like to say that the Bronx Eats model is a learn and repeat model, right? You watch Jasenia do it. And then you're like, okay, maybe I can try that. And, uh, and next thing you know, you'll be making the same thing as she just showed us at home. So thank you so much. Uh, we know that eating fruits and vegetables is the best medicine uh, for all of us. And that consuming healthy, real food instead of processed food strengthens our bodies, our immune systems and our moods. So diet is critical to preventing and even reversing many chronic diseases including heart disease and diabetes. So let's learn how to make better food choices together. Let's do this for yourself, for your family and the planet. It is not out of reach. We just saw from Jasenia, it is definitely not out of reach. We can do it together in community through Bronx Eats and in your own kitchen. Um, so, you know, make the substitutions you need. You don't like agave, you can use date syrup. You don't like cilantro, you can leave it out. Um, be creative get more confident, give it a try. Um, it's not rocket science and we know you can do it. Um, we hope you'll join us uh, next week for the last class in this series. Um, and uh, it's the same time, same place. Just make sure that you register if you haven't already. And please tell your friends. Um, we really appreciate when you spread the love around, spread the food love around. Um, and thank you again, Jasenia. We're really so grateful. So keep eating real food, stay healthy, and we'll see you next week. And please, please fill out the survey. And uh, thanks for coming. Have a great evening. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Stay Thanks, cool. <laughs> Thank you. We'll see you next Have week. a great night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.